How's it going guys? Welcome back to another exciting episode of Diesel Creek. If this is your first time joining us, my name's Matt and this beautiful hunk of scrap metal is my 1991 Ford Ranger STX. This was my first pickup truck and I'm still hanging on to it because I've got another Ranger that I'm working on and I got some parts I need to steal off of this thing and uh, got some easy access under here. See, here we are now underneath the truck, and really the only thing I'm after underneath it here is this clutch line. I need to disconnect this. This is a hydro hydraulic clutch in these trucks, and on the inside there's like a little piston that will uh, compress your spring for your clutch and disengage it. This line here just has a little clip on it. I should be able to pop that off pretty easy and fish it up through. And then uh, we're going to put the truck back on the ground probably to get the rest of this unit out because I need to get the slave cylinder and the reservoir off the firewall and pull it out as one unit. Seems like there's just a clip right here that needs to be pulled out and this thing will release if I'm not mistaken. There we go. Now that clips out. Hopefully this line just pulls right out of here. There it goes. Whew, everything's always harder than it needs to be. Now this valve, there's a valve here at the end of the line. It's got a little check valve on it, so we're not losing any fluid right now. Well, everything that we needed to do underneath of the truck is done now, so uh, we'll go ahead and set the truck back on the ground, nice and gentle-like. While I got the machine out here, I also need this uh, spare tire off of here as well. Might as well take the lug nuts with me because she don't need them anymore. Under the hood here now, the next thing we're going after, we need the clutch reservoir and we need the pedal master cylinder down there. So there's two, maybe three bolts on that thing and then the rod goes through it and connects to the clutch pedal in the cab. Looks pretty easy to get out, hopefully. Probably. All right, well, like a lot of things in my life, that turned out to be way more of an ordeal than it should have been because the nut that's welded under the flywheel that holds the master cylinder broke off from the flywheel and was just spinning around inside there, so that took an extra couple minutes. Well, I finally fished the whole assembly out of there. This thing has been uh, floating around in that truck since 1991 without incident. And uh, I went ahead and broke it, so that probably was a waste of time. But we'll give it one, one attempt at fixing this. Uh. All right, it's cold, buddy. Don't get too wet. Hey, don't get soaked. Come on. You got to get in the truck here in a few minutes. Yeah. What do you think about that, bud? Where's the stick? Get a stick. You want to catch a stick? Yeah, where's the stick? There's a good stick. Hey. Hey. 
All right, guys, right back here in the shop on the 88 Ranger. We're picking up in this video where we left off in the last one. So if you haven't seen that video, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and uh, click up in the corner over here, or down in the description, there'll be a link to the uh, first video on this truck. But anyway, so where we picked up last time, I had it running, uh, it wasn't running super smooth, and it was idling very high, right around 1800 RPM actually. So I could not get the idle to drop down. So I started naturally looking for vacuum leaks because if it's sucking air from somewhere, it's gonna throttle up higher and higher. And what I found was I completely taped off the throttle intake, idle air control, and the uh, big hose over here for the back boost. And all these other little lines and stuff are connected how they should be. So it can't be any of those. And what I found was that the engine, with all that stuff taped up, will still run. <laughs> so it's sucking a lot of air from somewhere. So this thing right here, you know, if, the moment you put your hand over that, it should pretty much stall the engine out. And it wasn't doing it. So I can go ahead and actually start this truck up just the way it sits with the tape on it and everything. And I'll show you an easy test to uh, test for vacuum leaks. Because the only place left to look for a vacuum leak was down around the plenum here where the uh, three ports come down on top of the intake. So I figured that's where it had to be, but we'll go ahead and show you how I tested for that. So to test for a vacuum leak here, I just, uh, I initially left this piece off. That was the last piece I added. And I just kept closing off different ports, making sure that that wasn't causing the, uh, the vacuum leak. And I, I even went as far as putting my hand over this thing thinking surely that's going to shut the engine off and it didn't. So I put tape over that and the engine basically kept running the same. So we have a serious air leak somewhere in the plenum and I uh, found it because you tape this off and then the only place left is down here in the plenum flanges, I believe you call those. So you just, while the engine's running, hit it with a little bit of ether down around those things, and you gotta listen to the engine. It'll actually uh, make the engine run rougher or idle down or whatever you wanna call it because it's getting too much fuel at that point. So we'll go ahead and start this thing up and show you. So uh, hopefully you guys were able to tell every time I'd spray the uh, ether down around the bottom of this plenum, it would immediately uh, drop the idle and run a little bit rougher. So that means we were uh, definitely influencing with the starting fluid. So uh, I had this off in the last video. I had to take this off to get to the injector rail and clean the injectors out. So uh, basically we have uh, bad gaskets. The gaskets looked fine when I stuck them back in there, but I did notice they were pretty hard. And probably should have just went ahead and bought new gaskets at the time, but not too hard to get this thing off. So we'll go ahead and uh, pull the six bolts out of it, and I got a new gasket set we'll throw on. So here's our new gasket. The uh, original gasket just had the small two-port pieces, and I'm not sure if I'll be able to use the whole thing, but it is perforated to cut those out if we need to. So keep that in mind. All we got to do to pull the plenum, it's one wire now, and uh, six bolts, and this should just flip up and out of the way. All right, looks like our plenum's loose. I keep calling it that. I'm 99% sure that's what you call this. Intake plenum. Plenum. Something like that. Three wires. Missed another one. Right. Up and out of the way we are. Here's our old gaskets. And they're pretty hardened up and stuff. Not really probably doing much sealing anymore. I'm also thinking that You know, they're kind of compressed originally, and then I took them off and tried to recompress them. And since they're hardened, they're probably not form-fitting or any more. So, those are junk. So I did indeed have to disconnect them to make them all fit in here. Yeah, it looks like these are going to work out a lot better, though. 
the other set they kind of looked like the holes were off just a bit like they would fit on top and I could line the bolt holes off but then the ports were like skewed a little bit I don't know what would cause that flip or plenum them back over boy if I'm not calling this the right thing you guys are just gonna murder me in the comments Open, fingers crossed. Contact. for taking the clutch assembly, the hydraulic clutch assembly, out of the other Ranger at the beginning of the video here was because this truck had no hydraulic clutch. I mean, it was there, but you push the pedal, you had no, no resistance. So this truck was having issues with the hydraulic clutch, 
when you push the pedal, nothing would happen. Uh, it should be pretty easy to depress, but you could clearly tell that this one wasn't uh, depressing the clutch inside the tranny there. So I've removed this system the same as the other one and strapped it onto the engine hoist here and straightened it all out because when it's mounted in the truck, it's really hard to bleed it. I've watched some videos on YouTube just the same as you guys probably would to uh, bleed this thing. And they say this is the easiest way to do it. So I've got it filled with fluid. I don't see any leaks on it. Go ahead and take a screwdriver handle and just start tapping, tapping the line all over the place. And the idea is to try and get the air bubbles to work themselves up to the top here. See that? It's working. So that's pretty impressive. Look at that. She's burping right out of there. Yeah, I, I did play around trying to bleed this thing in the truck and nothing was happening. I got a, to take a little bit of fluid down, but it's, it's already taken a lot more since I've started this than it did the whole time I was messing with it in the truck. So this seems to be working pretty good. The other thing it says to do, take a screwdriver here and stick it in the end of your master cylinder. You guys can't see. See, the other technique that they uh, say to do here is take your screwdriver and just push these short little choppy strokes in your master cylinder. And that's supposed to help dislodge the bubbles. And this line down here, if you can see, has these little quick connects in it. Uh, that's not factory. The previous owner must have cut the line or broke the line or I don't know. But he stuck these like fuel line type connectors in there. And I'm not so sure that that's supposed to hold this much pressure, and I'm not so sure that that's gonna work. But I cut the line on the other one that I was pulling off to put in here, so I don't know, I have the connectors. We'll go ahead and try this thing and see if it works. If it doesn't, oh well. Okay, I've been tapping for quite a while now, and uh, I haven't seen any more big bubbles come out. I've seen a couple teeny, teeny, teeny bubbles and now I can't hardly push this thing at all. So that must mean that we have all the air out of it, and that's a good sign. Uh, I'm gonna put a little, well, I guess it's actually up to the fill line. I'm gonna go ahead and put the cap back on this thing and we'll put it in the truck. So before we can connect our pressure line to our slave cylinder down there, uh, we should top off this reservoir all the way to the top. And once we connect that to the slave cylinder, we're gonna air bleed it, or gravity bleed it. And the guys online said to let like a whole cup come through it, like a whole reservoir full. That seems like an awful lot, but we'll see what happens. So there it is. We're full to the tip top. Now I'll take you underneath there. We'll connect up the pressure line and crack the bleeder. And we'll have to hurry up and come up here and monitor this thing so we don't uh, run out of fluid. All right, so basically we should be able to just make sure there's no dirt on this thing and press it in here and it'll click. Oh, maybe. All right, got our bleed screw open. We should start experiencing gravity bleed going on any second. Any second. Any second. Tell you what, rather than wait on gravity to do it, I'm gonna go ahead and hook up a brake bleed tool and put a suction on this thing. That ought to help get the process moving here. I'm not sure why we're not getting fluid passing through this thing. Well, I'm having a bit of a rough go of it here with this uh, hydraulic clutch. 
you know, it's one of those things that should be easy and it's just taking forever and it's not going right. So after you install the clutch assembly as a whole with it already bench bled, uh, you're supposed to be able to fill up the fill up the reservoir and then go down on the transmission. Down here on the transmission, you're supposed to be able to crack loose that bleeder right there, which I've done. And as soon as you crack it loose, everybody says the fluid should just start flowing from the reservoir. And then you're supposed to flush like two reservoirs full of fluid through it to get all the air bubbles out of the slave cylinder. And then just close it up. Should be as simple, easy as that. Well, no fluid comes out of this one. I don't know if that means the slave cylinder is bad or what. I've had the old vacuum brake bleeder connected to it, drawn on it, and I did get some fluid out of it doing that. Um, so right now, I'm, but I, I couldn't get it enough. I have a little bit of pedal, uh, but I don't have enough pedal. So my next course of action here, I have the bleeder open right now. As you can see, nothing's coming out. So, so I rigged up this uh, extendo blow gun here, and I'm basically just gonna stick it down in here and pressurize the entire system with the air gun and hopefully if I can get this thing centered so it seals hopefully I can make the fluid push through where the heck there it is this is uh, probably how to wear brake fluid all over your face in 3, 2, 1 yep, that was dumb Mom always told me stupid is as stupid does, right? That's what old Forrest said. I just took a bath in brake fluid, much like I suspected. Got it in my eye. I flushed it out with some water. Hopefully that does it. It's a good time. Highly recommend it to you fellers. All right, I'm pulling out all the stops for this one. This is the uh, third or fourth attempt, I guess, now. And I, I've gone in with the heavy hitters now. I went and grabbed my big vacuum pump here. And I got it rigged up to the uh, the drip canister here. And I'm trying to suck the fluid in through the bleeder. I was reading online that some people had success doing it that way. And it seems to make sense. It'll pull all the air out through the reservoir. Uh, yeah, so hopefully I can do that. I tried it first with the little vacuum guy here, the old brake bleeder. And it... I just don't think it has the gusto to pull through the whole system. And I also had the wife over here for a half an hour, pushing the clutch down, trying to bleed it like brakes, you know, crack the bleeder loose, push the pedal, close the bleeder, let up on the pedal. And for a while there, I mean, it seemed like I was getting somewhere and the fluid that's coming out of the slave cylinder is like black. So I'm concerned that maybe we have a bad slave cylinder at this point. So if this doesn't work, I'm just going to go ahead and call it and say that there's a bad slave cylinder and we're getting air in there somehow or it's bypassing or something or other. It's not holding pressure. So if that's the case, see you, old girl. Uh, I'm not pulling the transmission. I really don't feel like messing with it, this truck. I was already debating in the last episode about what I really wanted to do with this truck. And the more I keep looking at it, the, the little more rough spots I find. And I definitely not wanting to sink so much time into doing this truck into a diesel swap or something it's just uh it's a little too far gone to put that kind of effort into if i want to do one of those projects and i definitely do i'm going to go down south and pick up a truck that's really clean because this guy while it looks clean from far away when you really see it in person it's got some character to it but anyway i guess we'll uh, go ahead and switch on the vacuum pump here i have this little temporary reservoir rigged up here with brake fluid in it and that runs down to the bleeder and the bleeder is cracked open and then uh, of course we have fluid in our reservoir still hopefully I should be able to just plug this bad boy in and it'll suck that fluid there down through and up through the system here I just gotta make sure that doesn't run dry and then we'll be screwed again
Oh, you see the air bubble come up there? So it is working. I got a couple bubbles like that out with the hand pump. Actually, I got several out like that, but apparently not enough. I'm watching the uh, temporary reservoir over here. Can't really tell if it's falling yet. I think it is, but really slowly. There we go, you see all those bubbles? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Look at that. Boys, we might just make this work. Yeah, look at all them bubbles. Woo! Heck yeah. Oh, this is genius. I should have done this in the beginning. I spent a couple hours trying to get this thing bled now. I haven't started this thing in a few days. I, it feels like I have a little bit of pedal. I'm not sure if it's enough. Contact. Why well, am not? I'm not hearing fuel pumps. What the heck? Okay, well, this is why these YouTube videos are such a pain to make. It's because check the clutch on camera. The stupid engine wouldn't start. The fuel pumps weren't running. So I'm up here troubleshooting wiring for like an hour, at least an hour, just to find out that the former owner had bypassed the inertia switch here on the floor, which be these two wires here. And he just had them just twisted together. So I, uh, cut those off fresh and put a nice butt connector on there and lo and behold you turn the key and the fuel pumps run so now nearly instantaneously for you we get to see this thing fire up but it's been a long hard annoying road for me contact I think she's losing her fuel prime. Or actually, I might be out of fuel. Let's play a game called Why Won't You Start Now? Injectors are still gummy. Anyway, let's see if the clutch is doing anything. Oh! Clutch is working a little, but not great. So, apparently the vacuum pump method is working. Uh, I just got some more air to get out. So, we'll give this a round two. So, I flipped the whole setup around. Looks like some sort of mad science experiment now get all these bubbles but I think that's because it's pulling air past the bleed screw uh, not sure but it is drawing fluid from the reservoir right now which is more than it's ever done before so fingers crossed if this doesn't work I'm as much as I hate to say it I gotta throw in the towel because to me this truck isn't worth my time to throw a slave cylinder in if that's the issue it's uh I'm not going to make the sale price that much different because I'm not going to hang on to this thing. I'm just going to try to sell it locally. And I really don't think a working clutch is going to affect the value all that much. Even after all that bleeding, got less than before on the pedal. That's it. Well, I'm usually not the type to give up on a project like this, but uh, I really just can't see this being worth my time. To change out the slave cylinder, you either have to pull the transmission or the engine. Makes more sense to pull the transmission, but it's such a pain. It's really, I really don't see this truck selling for much more than $800 to $1,000 anyways, with or without that clutch working. Uh, we should still be able to drive it. I should be able to just start it in gear, and uh, that'll get us out the door. Or 
if somebody wants to buy it, you know, we could load it up, start it in first gear and drive it onto a trailer or something. So I guess at this point, I'm going to go ahead and get the bed set back on it, put the hood back on it and button up a few things and uh, slap a for sale sign on it. She is going down the road with somebody else. Well, I got her back together and looking like a truck again. Got the bed set on there, and bolted down. Fished the wires up through the tail lights, but the bulbs are all broke, so I'm not going to bother to put the uh, tail lights themselves in. Put a little spit shine on the cab. Try to gloss it up a little bit, so it's not so dark and dingy. Maybe. Uh, help somebody spend a couple more dollars on this thing it's really it's not a bad truck it's just not worth putting the kind of effort into to do a diesel swap that I would like to do door shut nice there's a spark plug on the roof how'd you get there so even though there's no clutch I should still be able to drive this thing I'm hoping I can just kind of start it up in reverse pull out of the garage here and contact injectors still need run a good bit. I'll probably just push this thing outside and let it run for a good while.
Well, guys, I guess that's about the last you're going to see of the old Ranger. On to different projects here. Got the Jeep pulled in the shop, but that's another video. So if you like the video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up. Uh, I really wish we could have made this project work out, but we will definitely be looking for another Ranger in the future because I do really want to do a diesel swap on one. I think that'd be a really fun project. A lot of you uh, said the same thing. So look forward to that sometime in the future, but not anytime real soon. You guys, you guys all know I got plenty of projects to keep me busy for a while. So until the next one, you guys stay safe. I'll see you later. Thanks for watching. Bye.